Hello, welcome to Digital Design with Perilak course. So today we'll discuss about RTL design, and we'll take uh, two classical examples. So one is a multiplier, sequential multiplier, and another one is vector dot product unit. So for multiplier, so we'll discuss uh, in more detail, and for BDP we'll go for very very high level uh, design. Let's start with the course. So this two problems outline of this today lecture is so two classical problem particularly sequential multiplier booth encoding and at high level we will discuss about uh, BDPU that is vector dot product unit but uh, more details detail of uh, sequential multiplier we will discuss and not only I mean design so we will look at uh, that detailed Verilog code of uh, sequential multiplier also so we looked at uh, the test benches, how we can write test benches for that. So let us start with and we have uh, uh, taken this uh, uh, example or material from uh, Mano book, chapter 8 of Mano book and for this example we will use uh, 8 bit sequential multipliers. So in general addition is uh, very easy, additions uh, is actually people go for actually combinational design but uh, for multiplications because multiplications take time, so people go for sequential design. So in classical examples, if you look at, so RTL of multiplier examples, let us take examples. Suppose you want to multiply binary 101 with uh, binary 011. So partial product of sum for n digits, it require, it will multiply two n digit numbers, okay. Then we require, means uh, require adding up, up to n digits in a column. So, we will get n digits in a column. So, a partial sum will require n digit adding in a columns and for n cross m digit multiply generate m plus n digital result, digit result. So, so suppose n bit, one number is n bit, another number is m bit, then resultant will be m plus n bit. So, in this case, uh, we look at uh, this is 3 bit and this is 3 bit and result is uh, we can say it is 6 bit. So, in this case whenever we are multiplying 101 with uh, 011 this is binary. So, this is uh, 101 multiplied with 011 then what we do as a means class uh, what I can say primary class examples. So, in general what do we do? So, because this is 1 so this same values uh, get uh, placed here as a partial sum. And next is uh, we are putting on the one left of this thing, the same thing because now next digit or next bit is also one. So that is why we are keeping the same thing here, okay. And last bit is uh, 0, so that is why we are putting 0. So if you look at here one shift, one shift we are doing. And here we are adding, this is added, this one is added, this is this one is added, this one is added and this one is added. And this one is uh, last carry may get at the end. So, that is why it will result in 6 bit. But if we are multiplying 2 3 bit number result may go up to 6 bit. So, this is the standard and what we are doing? We are every time, so this partial sum. So, we are putting the initial product, initial partial product then partial sum get calculated by adding this 2 then by adding this all three we get the partial sum. So, in hardware, so either uh, we can do either put the things in the left or we do right shift. So, in actual hardware we do in multiplier division we do a right shift. So, that we will see. And for this uh, same uh, 101, 101 and 011 examples, so what are the steps we follow? So, reorganizing the example to follow hardware algorithm. So, what we are doing is actually same 101 and 011. So, if you look at first digit is uh, 1 for first digit. So, initial partial sum, this is initial partial sum. So, this is uh, clear C and A, A is the result, okay. So, initial partial sum, then uh, this is initial partial sum, then first time we are putting this thing. Then after this, so we are getting the partial sum, this is the partial sum, okay. This is uh, partial sum initiated to 0, this is first partial sum, this one is then what we are doing, we are doing a right shift here. So, in this case after generation of 
parcel sum or doing a right shift. So, after doing right shift this 0 1 0 1, so we are getting 0 0 1 0 1 and this 1 0 is getting added. So, particularly this 0 is getting added and in the next time, so we are getting another one. So, for this case we are again adding 1 0 1 because already we have done the right shifting. So, we can put it at that place. Once it is done, so then we need to add the things. So, this is adding and now we got the parcel sum 2, second parcel sum. Okay. Once we get the parcel sum, then we do a again right shift. Okay. So, in the means uh, pen and paper we do, um, we put the uh, means, uh, this number in the left and now in hardware we add the number and do a right shift. So, that we do. In this case, we are doing a right shift. So, we are getting what adding a 0 and doing a right shift. Okay. And then last guys, so in this case uh, third parcel sum because we do not have actually what I can say uh, anything. So, because this bit is 0, then we are doing instead of adding for 0 we do not need to add, simply do a right shift. So, that will uh, give us the result. So, if you look at this thing, so this is the result. So, let us go back to previous example, this is 0, 0, 001 and 111. So, this is uh, this is the result. So, this uh, blue is green color, whatever we are saying is actually result. So, every time we are doing uh, calculation of partial sum. So, if it is 1, then only we are doing additions, otherwise, no. So, initially it is clear the CA partial sum, then if it is 1, it is multiplier current bit. So, this is the current bit, if it is 1, 0 bit is 1, then only you are adding B. Okay. So, that we are doing additions and once we do additions, right shift, fill uh, 0 fill C, that means this carry bit is filled 0 and then we are shifting. If multiplier next bit, this is middle bit, this is 0 bit, this is 1 bit, then this is second bit. Next bit is 1, then we are doing additions and this is the addition operations and then shifting because multiplier the second bit, 0 bit, 1 bit and second bit, third bit is 0. So, we do not require add. So, that is why we are putting addis no additions and then but we require shift right. So, for every bit we require shifting. So, in this case we have 3 bit 1, 2 and 3. So, 3 right shift we require and number of additions we require is so, number of 1s available in the multiplier. So, here number of uh, available 1 is 2. So, that is why we are doing 2 additions, 2 time additions and we are getting 2 time parcel sums. So, this is the way wha how we are doing. So, serially we are doing one after another. Okay. So, binary multiplications if you look at. So, particularly binary number multiple polynomial multiplications, you can map this problem to polynomial multiplication if you want to solve in actually algorithmic way. We can think binary number A and B as polynomials and the suppose uh, uh, AX is a polynomial and this is a, a polynomial, this is a polynomial of uh, n degree and here base is 2, you can say 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2 and 2 to the power n minus 1 and multiplying 2 polynomial to get another one. So, A is a polynomial, A x is a polynomial, then B x is a polynomial and suppose C is equal to A into B. So, this is a two polynomial multiplication. So, ultimately it means very crude way of doing this thing is you can easily you can do it order of n square algorithm, basic serial algorithm. But if you are going for divide and conquer, you can go for n to the power 1 by 5 by using divide and conquer approach and if you want to use uh, FFT based algorithm then it can be done in n log n. So, because polynomial, polynomial can be represented in this is n bit, uh, n digit number we can represent as polynomial and polynomial can be represented as in frequency domain and whenever you are representing in frequency domain, so multiplication can be converted into additions. So, similar to, so 2 to the power suppose uh, 2 to the power 10 into 2 to the power suppose 15. If you do this thing, so this is multiplication, 2 to the power 10 into 2 to the power 15, 
then it will be actually 2 to the 10 plus 15. This is its exponential domain because we are multiplying in exponential or frequency domain. So, in FFT it is do it in multiplications we do in actually exponential domain, multiplication get converted into additions. But conversion from general time domain to frequency domain we use FFT and it takes actually n log n time. So, overall time complexity will be n log n. So, booth algorithms, so this is another interesting algorithm, this algorithm reduce the number of partial additions. So, in earlier case, so if you look at the things, so in this case there are two ones, so we require two partial sum, okay, means uh, we require to add two times because of two one. If we which booth algorithm, booth encoding, then probably we may will be able to reduce the number of additions or subtractions. Addition subtraction can be done in the same hardware and suppose uh, the best example is suppose 99, 99 just let us represent 100 minus 1. Suppose you want to do suppose uh, 99 into suppose 12, then best way is actually 100 minus 1 into 12. So, this will make us the problem easier, this will be actually 1200 minus 12. 1200 minus 12. So, this is actually so 1188. So, this is a much easier way to do. So, we can think in that way. So, 95 can be written as 100 minus 5. In binary domain, so suppose 111 base 2, suppose this is 7, 7 can be represented as 8 minus 1, 8 minus 1. So, so possibly it will reduce the number of addition and subtractions. So, if you look at the means school grade means, uh, gra means basic uh, primary school trick when multiplying by 9, multiply by 10 and just subtract once. So, easy just shift digit left. Suppose you want to multiply 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 4 into 9. Then this one is actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4 into 10 minus 1. So, this will be actually this multiplying by 10 is just adding a 0 and this is uh, subtracting. This is actually this multiplications, this bigger multiplications got converted into actually one shifting left shift we are adding a 0 and one subtractions. So, multiplication got shifted means uh, converted into just uh, shifting and additions. So, convert addition of 6 partial sum into one shift and one subtractions we can do if you do with actually very simple thing. Suppose we do a Suppose uh, this number is uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Suppose there are this number is there. Okay. Suppose this number is there. So, we can convert this thing. So, this is a uh, uh, 5 number is there. Suppose uh, instead of that, suppose one more 1 is there. Suppose uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, if you look at this number, so what is the number? Number is actually this is a uh, 1, this is a uh, 2, this is 4, 8, 16, 32. So, this will be actually if you look at the things, this will be 64 minus 1, this number will be 63 and 63 can be represented as 64 minus 1. So, this will be actually 1, 0, 0, 0, another 0, another 0. So, this is 6 0, Th this number is 64 and minus 1. So, in this case, this get converted into this is the first one, we can this is subtract and this one is additions. So, kind of a, because now we are representing using this is we can represent this as plus 1 and this one represents at minus 1. So, both algorithms applies the same principle in binary domain. So, in this case uh, we can convert the 6 partial sum into 1 shift operations. So, search for a run of 1, one bits in the multiplier. So, suppose this is the examples. So, 0 1 1 0 has 3 ones in the middle. So, this can be converted this is 14 decimals and 14 decimal equivalent to equivalent to multiplying by 8 and subtracting twice. So, this is if you look at and if you look at this, this one is uh, 
14. So, this is 14, if you look at uh, 14 into m is same as actually 16 minus 2 m. Okay. 16 minus 2 m. So, in this case what uh, we are doing actually, so in this case this get represented as actually 16 m minus 2 m. So, in this case this plus this first case get converted into negative 1 and this is positive 1. So, 0 1 1 1 it get converted to plus 1 this is uh, minus 1 and plus 1. So, hence as we can iterate right to left subtract multiplicand from product at the first one okay, and then add multiplicand to the product after the last one. Okay, so, and whenever do not do either for one bit in the middle. So, that is the uh, basic for both encoding and let us look at the clear example. So, in this case uh, uh, suppose current bit is 1 and next bit bit to the right is 0 then what we are doing current bit is 1. So, this is current bit this one is current bit and next bit is uh, this one is next bit this one is next bit 1 0 then subtract. Okay, so, and if it is 1 1 both are 1 1 then do nothing both are 1 do nothing if it is this is the current bit and next bit is 1 next bit is 1. So, do nothing. So, if it is current bit is 0, current bit is 0 and next bit is 1, 0 1 case do the additions and if both are 0 again do nothing. So, clearly so in this case this numbers if you look at these things. So, this get converted into minus 1 and this 0 get converted into plus 1. So, this number get converted to plus 1 because of if you look at uh, 0 1 in this case current bit is 0 then this 0 get converted into plus and because of this thing so because 1 0 case so in this case this get converted to minus 1. So, let us look at the bigger sequence so how it behaves. So, for bigger sequence uh, suppose let us take uh, the sequence of sequence of uh, bit so 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 1 there are many ones then 0 then 1 then this. So, it will, this is the sequence of numbers. So, suppose without doing booth encoding. So, how many additions or partial sum we need to calculate how many additions we require. So, for without doing this in the, this is without booth encoding without booth encoding. So, this one is uh, so if it is 0 then we do not need to do if it is 1 then we need to do additions for every corresponding. So, if it is a 0 then we do not need to do otherwise we need to do additions if it is 0 then do not do additions if it is uh, 1 then we need to do additions. So, this is additions additions in this case we require to do 21 additions 21 additions we need to do 21 addition for this string for this number. Suppose this is a multiplier then we need to do 21 additions. Suppose we encode into the booth encoding then what will happens? So, because for this is the current number suppose current number this is the current number look at the next guy right guy if it is a current is 0 and next guy is 1 then do the additions. If it is current guy is 1 and next guy is 1 do not do. So, if it is a current guy is 1 next guy is 0 then do the subtractions. If current guy is 0 next guy is 1 do additions. So, we convert the sequence into either additions, subtractions or do not do anything. So, 3 operations A, S and X. So, here how, what are the operations addition, subtractions and do not do anything. So, in, in this case there are two operations either A or X in this case there are A, S and X three things are there addition, subtractions or do not do anything. But for all the cases for all the sequence we need to do shifting, shifting is must, shifting we cannot get rid of these things. Okay, so, if you encode this string in both then how many addition 
and subtractions we are doing and how many as x operations so not doing operations we are doing. So, if you look at so in this case clearly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 addition or subtractions we are doing and for rest of the bit we are not doing anything. So, what it says? It says that if we do both encoding probably we will get means uh, we will do less work because we need to do less number of addition subtractions. So, in general what happens the uh, adder circuit adder subtractor circuits we use common adder subtractor and adder subtractor takes similar amount of time ok. So, most of the time it is 2 s complement for things if you add. So, if you convert a number into 2 s complement form then subtractions also can be done with the same adder ok. So, addition and subtraction can be done with the same adder in it. So, in that way so if you convert to means addition get converted into subtractions will not have any much impact on the circuit. But overall if you do in booth encoding then if you use a adder subtractor then we can do the same work possibly with a lesser number of adder subtractions. So, that is why it is a booth algorithm is beneficial and this is for 2 bit sequence. So, if you suppose uh, we are considering only 2 bits continuous 2 bit current bit and next bit and this can be extended to multi bit instead of considering continuous 2 bit we can consider con continuous 3 bit continuous 4 bit. In this case if you are considering continuous 2 bit then number of cases coming are actually 2 cases uh, 4 cases 00, 0, 01, 10 and 11. But if you are considering 3 continuous bit sequence then it will have actually 8 cases we need to consider all 8 cases. Sequential multiplier algorithm so very high level algorithm we will look at. So, what actually is, this is uh, this uh, particular diagram so we are taking from computer organization and design book by David A. Patersons ok. And this is for uh, 32 bit but in our very uh, code we also for 8 bit but both are similar. So, we are using a 32 bit ALU or adder. So, this is adder. So, this uh, ALU can do adder subtractions. If I suppose uh, adder subtractor in it, then it can do adder subtractor, but in this case, uh, we are using ALU. So, multiplicand, then multiplier, or what we are doing? Multiplier, multiplier we are putting into B, B equal to multiplier. So, this lower part we are putting the multiplier, ok. And if LSB of B equal to 1, then add a to p ok. So, this is here what in it? this lsb of this b. So, low b 0 b 0. So, in this case if b 0 is equal to 1 then it will activate. So, this uh, particularly whether it is add or subtract based on the bit lsb of b. If lsb of b is equal to 1 then add otherwise it will says add 0 that means it will not do ok. So, this is very basic sequential algorithm. So, if LSB is equal to 1 then A is equal to P. If it is uh, LSB is equal to 0 then add 0. So, that means do not add. So, it says it sends signal do not add ok. And this particular means uh, uh, flow ok this uh, particular design can be done for both encoding or very sequential algorithm also because for sequential means we require only add for both we require both add and subtract. And this thing for very basic sequential algorithm. So, repeat this step 2 and 3 for n minus 1 times. So, n is here number of bits. So, in this case 32, but we can go for any number 8, 16 or whatever we want ok. And finally, product gets stored in the P and B ok. So, suppose you are adding 2 n bit number then product will be 2 n bit. So, in this case we are adding 2 32 bit numbers and result will be a 64 bit number. So, in this case every time so whatever get carry get generated carry get means append to the high side of the this product P high side of the products otherwise we get a 0 get added. So, let us see detail of about this uh, sequential multiplier. Why we are saying it is sequential multiplier? Because uh, multiplication take time, addition 
can be done very easily because uh, uh, addition take uh, complexity is very less, but in this case uh, multiplications we require uh, in this case suppose every cycle you are doing means either additions or shifting then we require around uh, in this case 32 bit it requires 64 cycle and for initializations may be one or two cycle extra. Suppose you are doing 8 bit addition uh, 8 bit multiplications then it may require uh, 16 cycle plus one or two extra uh, means initialization cycle. So, this is block diagram of a multiplier. So, in general whenever you are designing a proper FSM plus data path. So, this is a, a flow we are showing. So, similar to this, but here in this case so what you are doing instead of uh, ALU we are using a adder. So, here n bit we are adding. Okay. So, this is a register B you are storing okay. and then this register B initially register B if you look at the register SAM register B is actually put into means uh, this one is a multiplicand, this one is multiplicand, this one is multiplier and both are n bit. So, input are uh, multiplicand stored in B and multiplier stored in Q. Okay. So, multiplier were storing initially multiplier gets stored in Q and output is actually if you look at the product is uh, both uh, A and Q in this case and here n bit b get added and this same things whatever the register a content this is get actually loop back okay and this adder can do the addition continuously but only the register particularly register this flip flop this c this register this register these are actually clocked one so this need to be signaled properly so based on clock it will work on the actually rising edge of the clock it works. Okay, so, this is the data path of the uh, sequential multiplier and for the control path, so let us see uh, how it look like from the top. So, because suppose you want to do for n bit, so n bit multiplications we are doing that means initially we need to initialize a counter p with uh, n because n is number of bit, suppose n is 8 then initialize p with 8. Okay. That means, uh, so in this case uh, uh, suppose uh, in this case uh, log 2 and whatever saying is actually n. So, in this case uh, uh, this n and this n are uh, different in this case uh, p is equal to a number of bits. Okay. So, and then uh, every time you try to uh, decrement every time you try to decrement and if you get a detected 0, if you get a detected 0 then it will give the things to controller. So, detected 0 and every time what you are doing? So, 0 means we stop the means uh, process, detected 0 means we stop the process then now multiplication is ready. Okay. So, whatever the uh, multiplier and multiplicand already multiplied and product is ready. Here for every steps for every steps what we are doing we are checking for uh, right most bit okay right most bit of the multiplier and every time we are shifting so that right most bit of the multiplier we are checking and whenever we are shifting the bit uh, changes first uh, zeroth bit first bit second bit it goes so every time we shift so bit changes okay so this is the control path this part and this part is data path so in this multiplier design we require both the part, so, both the data path also control path. So, data path because uh, from the uh, what you can say high level algorithm, so we can uh, say that uh, what kind of uh, uh, data path we require okay. and for this also we require to design controller. So, let us represent the SAM problem with actually ASM chart and from there we can re infer to the SAM and we can come up with proper circuits. So, this multiplier, so what operations we do in step 1, multiplicand is loaded into register B, multiplicand is loaded into register B, multiplier loaded into register Q. So, in this case, this one is actually, this is multiplier, this is Q is multiplier, this is multiplicand get loaded. Step 3 is register C A is initialized to 0, 1 G become 1. So, this is one hour go become 1. So, it is get initialized 
and step 4 the partial product are summed iteratively in register CAQ. CAQ means so this is concatenations carry this is a partial additions higher part and the Q. So, Q is the lower part of the product. So, initially we load B into Q. So, this is a multiplier get loaded and every time whenever you shift we get the current bit. So, every time B got shifted B get loaded to Q and whenever you shift Q we get the current bit and based on the current bit particularly Q0 Q0 always give because B get loaded to Q and whenever you shift every iteration we get Q0 we get the current bit of B. In step 6 each multiplier bit beginning with LSB is processed ok. If bit is 1 use adder to add B to the partial product if bit is 0 then do nothing this is very sequential multiplier not with booth encoding. So, if you are encountering a 1 and the current bit of a multiplier then you do additions if you are encountering a 0 then do not do anything. So, that means do not do additions ok. Step 6 so CAQ is shifted right using the shift register partial product bits fill vacant location in Q as multiplier is shifted out if a overflow during additions occurs then C gets set. So, carry out is recovered from C and it get inserted. If you are getting during partial sum, if it generate a carry, then that carry get means uh, get stored into the C. Otherwise, by default, it is we add a 0. And this particularly step 5 and 6, 5 and 6 are repeated until counter P is equal to 0. That means, so for 8 bit numbers, 8 bit number multiplications to 8 bit number multiplications. So, we need to iterate for 8 times and clearly there are 2 operations here happening. So, one thing is initializations, then second operation is uh, additions, third operation is shift. Initializations, addition and shift ok. So, and this addition and shift operations definitely shift operation happening means uh, 8 times for 8 bit multiplier that means n times ok. And if is a counter p is initialized to n minus 1 where n is number of bits that means shifting happens n times shifting happen n times and this addition happens it depend upon means number of ones in the means multiplier ok. But uh, it need to iterate n time. And if you look at the ASM charts, so initially our uh, uh, system or our means machine will be in ideal state. Whenever it get a signal, go signals from external world, so go signals or start signals, then it initialize A, parcel sum A, then initialize P, that is a counter how many bit means uh, you are multiplying n bit numbers then it is initialized to p is equal to n minus 1 and then load b and q. So, what it get loaded? Load b and q. So, b get loaded with multiplier and no b get loaded with multi. So, q get actually multiplier and b get loaded with multiplicand. B get loaded with multiplicand. So, this is the first initialization, and in this, uh, this is a one what you can say block ASM block. And once uh, G is equal to 1, then it goes to the so next state. So, here it check whether this uh, current bit of multiplier, current bit of multiplier which is Q0, uh, current bit of multiplier which is Q0, if it is q0 is equal to 1 then it do addition operations and if carry is generated after additions then it is get shifted ok. So, that means this thing C out get actually uh, we can 
whatever the C out we get, so that get uh, written to C, that is carry storage, okay. C is a carry storage and after that this in MUL1 states, so there are two, three states, ideal state, MUL0 state and MUL1 state, okay. So, in MUL1 state it do the shifting, shifting then reduction of the counter, so particularly P is equal to P minus 1 and C is equal to 0, by default it adds C is equal to 0, okay, by default it adds and if in the earlier circle, cycle if it generates a C out then C have actually earlier carry and in this case what happens by default, so you will get because these operations get activated on the means previous data, this operations get activated on the previous data, this operations get operated that get activated means uh, result in actually next cycle, okay. This operation is the same thing. So, what are the value of earlier thing that get decremented here? And here there are three ASM block, this is another ASM block and this one is another ASM block. And here we are checking Z is equal to 1, whether this P is equal to P minus 1, this is counter decrement. If the counter decrement is uh, resulting at 0, that means what we are saying this uh, our product is ready. That means uh, we have done our multiplications, okay. So that means uh, we have done n times, n bit number we have done n times. And if you look at the things in this case there are three states ideal, mol0 and mol1. So for this ASM, so we have uh, three block, okay, three ASM block and whole these things get executed in one cycle whole these things get executed in another cycle and this this is another cycles. Whenever all of the things get executed in one cycle that means it take value from the previous cycle okay and it execute all the things in parallel okay. So because ASM it can combine both uh, uh, many and more machines so we can see this specification is actually many uh, more specification and this one is many specifications. So, whatever we write action in a state box is more kind of specification and whatever we write in conditional boxes, conditional action boxes that is actually this kind of things. So, here it is actually many kind of actions. In ideal state, if input G is used as conditions for starting the multiplications and C A are initialized and load B and load Q. So, this one is load B, this is actually multiplicand and this is multiplier, multiplier get loaded. In mol0 states, so we do a conditional addition is performed based on the value of Q0, based on the current bit of multiplier, okay. Every time we are shifting that is a current bit changes and we are checking only Q0 and in MUL1 states, so we do write seed operations, capture the partial products and position the next bit to the multiplier Q0. So every time we are shifting this uh, C, A and Q, this get shifted and the terminal count, whenever terminal count get to 0, then we sense or we say that. Uh, the multiplication is uh, already done because you have already done for 8 times. If uh, the counter value is 0, if uh, the resultant value of the counter after a subtraction is 0, then you can say that is already reached to 0. And if it is reached to 0, then it says uh, signifies that its uh, multiplication is done. So, what operations you are doing? So, if you look at the things, so we have register A, register B, register flip flop C, is not register flip flop C, then register Q and this is a, a counter P. So, counter we are doing, first thing is initially we need to load the numbers, then every time we need to do decrement. This is a load register and decrement. So, for register A, what operations we are doing? We are operation doing initializing the re, means A is equal to 0 
we are doing additions and we are doing shifting. This shifting is uh, for register A Q and this thing we are doing shifting C A Q all three things. This is a combination of C A and Q this is concatenated and we are shifting right. All three things are concatenated and shifting right. Okay. So, this is a shifting right shift right C A Q they are the control signals. This is a input this is Q is input. So, this is a Q is actually multiplier and this is a multiplicand. So, this is load register this is load register. So, so what modules and what kind of operations and this is the name of the signals okay. and this is at what time at in which state of the ASM algorithmic state machines we do. So, we do load register. So, in we initialize the things whenever ideal is equal to we are in state ideal and go signal is activated. So, when we are doing additions. So, addition if it is in state mol 0 and q 0 bit this current bit of multiplier is 1 that is q 0 then only we are doing additions. In mol 1 state we are not checking anything by default we are shifting okay you are in, this is load b so this is initial initial thing and this is clear when you are clearing whenever you are in ideal go signal is activated also in you are in mol 1 state in mol 1 still anyhow we are shifting also we are doing c is equal to 0 load register. So, load register this is also we are doing load q. So, when we are doing load q. So, load q we are doing whenever if you look at load q. So, whenever initialize things this is actually load b. So, load we are doing whenever ideal g. So, this is uh, supposed to be same thing. So, you can say ideal g. So, this is a uh, ideal dot g. So, this is also loading this is also loading ideal g. So, if you see this thing so this is load b and load q are doing this is load b and load q in ideal state ideal state and go is equal to 1 then we are doing loading b and q and similarly when we are doing this decrement in mol 1 state we are doing decrement. So, if you look at the means ASM chart. So, for multiplying 8 bit numbers to 8 bit numbers how many cycle it require? How many cycle? So, for this we require 1 cycle for iterating over what I can say uh, this 2 this 2 states for every bit we require to do iterations. So, suppose 8 bit so we require 8 into 2 and for doing the last guy. So, when result will be means uh, updated. So, this is 8 plus 2 1. So, this is the starting this is the iterations we require and result will be produced or result will be reflected on the end of the cycle in the end of the cycle. So, we can say uh, 17 cycle after 17 cycle end of the 17 cycle. So, this is the control and this controller we can generate. So, what are the how many states we have 3 states. So, one is ideal state this is for ideal this is for mol this is for mol 1 and from ideal state. So, it can be g is equal to 0 or 1 and we do not care what is the value of uh, q 0 and z. So, we do not care. So, directly strictly so it will generate this is uh, whenever ideal state and this thing is ready g is equal to 1 then ready signal ready signal is so ideal. So, if it is uh, in ideal state then it is ready and when load register ideal in state ideal and g is equal to 1. So, in this case it is load register and another thing is when it will do means load register and initializations. So, in this case uh, initialization is not there, but initialization uh, 
can be also done ok. Then in mul 0, mul 0 we have actually uh, q0 and q0 value will be 0 or 1. So, if it is q0 value equal to 0 anyhow we need to do decrement and if it is 1 then anyhow add register if it is 1 and this decrement anyhow we need to do. So, whether you are doing this or not. So, it, it, this decrement will do decrement p. So, if it is let us see decrement p where decrement p where in mol 0 we will do in decrement p. Let us see oh no this need to be mul 1. So, decrements this thing is decrement p need to be mul 1. So, not in this places ok. So, this is decrement p and in mul 1. So, what we do? So, every time whether it is 0 or 1 we do decrement. So, this is the mul 1 state. So, that is why this one is may be wrong. This is uh, for uh, decrement p if you are in state mul 1. So, independent of any other inputs we need to decrement. So, value of z it do not depend, but still we need to decrement and shift a q. So, whether we are uh, what value of uh, other things it do not depend we will shift ok. If you are in state mul 1 by default we will if you are in state mul 1 then c is equal to 0 happens, this shifting happens and this decrement happens. All the three things happen we were in state mul 1. If you are in state mol 1 then this things happens, this is mol 1. Shifting happens in mol 1, add register happens if you are in mol means state mol 0 and q 0 is equal to 1, this is uh, q 0 is equal to 1. So, this things is uh, not required and if you do the I means uh, we look at this is uh, correctly uh, mentioned here. So, decrement mol 1 shift in mol 1 then what we are doing load register ideal g ready is ideal add register is mol 0 q 0 this is fine and next state and current state how it will change on what value it will change. So, there are three states so 0 0 0 1 on 1 0 and if it, this is this is ideal one and this one is uh, mol 0 and this one is mol 1. So, when this state change happens, so that you can uh, state from one table. So, this table can be generated suppose what for what value, what uh, value get. Suppose uh, from this table we can see what are the next state. So, here if we are in ideal states and g is equal to 1, then we are going to next state. So, in this case, so next state value. So, if you look at the things, so next state value, so this is this value, this two values where it is happening. You are in, so this in this case it is exactly opposite. So, if you look at this thing, so this things are this two values, this one and this one. So, this is uh, two values particularly uh, n1 and n0, n1 will be uh, d1 dash by d0. So, from where we are getting? So, from here we are getting. So, here we are getting this thing because this are 2 1. So, this is a uh, n1 and n0. So, n1 and n0 is uh, actually we are getting from here and n0 we are getting from. So, d1 dash d0 dash g and d1 d0 dash z dex. So, this one is uh, so let us see. So, this one is uh, the present state next state can be generated very nicely in this way and this is the basic uh, whatever the earlier FSM design same things should apply here. And so once you get the means uh, present state, so we have actually 2 to 4 decoder. So, because the state is uh, 2 bits d0 and d1, so we have uh, 3 states and we have encoded 2 bits d1 and d0. 
from this we can actually uh, identify we are in which states. So, we are in ideal state, mol 0 state or mol 1 state and from this because based on the which state we are, we can generate I mean, suppose you are in ideal state and we got actually g is equal to 1. Suppose g is equal to 1 then this g get actually added here and it is generate if it is g is equal to 1 load register we are doing load register we are doing initializations we are doing. If you are in state mol 1 and q 0 q 0 is equal to 1 then we are doing add register. Okay, so, then you are in suppose mol 1 then by default mol 1 we are doing decrementing by default we are doing shifting C A Q. So, and we were in ideal state then it is ready. Once ideal state and g is equal to 1 then it is load register. So, we do load register. So, in this way we can generate controller for this multiplier sequential multiplier. So, here what are the signals ready load register add register decrement shift C A Q and what it takes status? Status is actually what you can say Z is status and this is actually what is the status of shifting or shifting right of the multiplier. This is the another status. This is S1 and this is S2 the two status and this is external input. So, this is a FSM or what you can say algorithmic state mapping implementations of sequential multiplier. We can write a Verilog code for this, okay, Verilog code for this. So, uh, how we can in Verilog code? So, this is product is actually means uh, 2 n bits. So, we have ready signals. So, ready means it is uh, this is status, it shows the status, and this one is a start, start is actually go. So, in the earlier example, you have the go signals. Whenever g is equal to 1, the it initialize and start the process. Okay. So, we have uh, two things multiplicand and multiplier, we have clock and we have reset, initially it reset. Okay. So, here we are de declaring, so set data path uh, width, so here uh, data path width is 5, so how many bit uh, multiplier we want to use, suppose it is 8 bit or 5 bits, so in this case we, in this example it is 5 bits and what is the bit counter size, so bit counter size is uh, 3. bit counter size is 3 and output will be means uh, 2 n bit 2 n minus 1 to 0 and this is output which is ready. So, once this uh, is computed then it is uh, ready. So, this is a uh, input multiplicand and multiplier and these are the go input or start input clock and resets and how we write the BHDL code. So, if you look at the things this have actually two parts one part is uh, uh, controller path other part is data path and before uh, going for controller and data path what are the things how many state we require in this case clearly three states ideal state add state that is uh, this one is if you look at this is uh, mol 0 state and this one is mol 1 state and this one is ideal and this one is uh, this means uh, three states. So, what two variables state and next state. There are two variables state variable you are using. So, one is state and another one is current state and next state and here. So, in data path we have a, a b and q. A is for partial sum, b is for multiplicand and q is for multiplier and c is a flip flop. So, this is this is c is uh, 1 bit, c is 1 bit okay, and this is the counter this is a counter. So, how many means initially how will means start the things okay. and these are the uh, signals we need to generate from the controller. This is a product assignments every times it is a continuous assignment. So, every time it is assigned product is equal to a q. So, a and q register a register and q register combinedly. So, combinedly means uh, string concatenations it is a result product and this is a counter 
whether 0 z is 1 or not. So, this specifies if p is equal to 0, counter values is 0, then it specifies the counter is equal to 0, it is uh, arise uh, 0 signals. Ready is equal to if state is equal to ideal, then we can say it is uh, ready state. And this is actually code for control unit, this one is code for control unit. So, what we do? So, initially, so if it is uh, uh, not reset, then state in ideal, else go to the next state. Okay. So, always then what we will do? Always uh, uh, try to uh, with this uh, set of uh, variables, set of inputs variables. So, state start q0 and 0 based on any things of these things either state changes or start signal changes or q0, q0 means actually multiplier current bit changes okay, or you got a 0. In that case, we need to take actions. So, next state is by default next state is as ideal, by default next state, default next state is ideal. Okay, this is default next state is ideal, similarly same thing we are writing and this is uh, load register is 0. So, we are decrement is equal to 0, then this add register, these are default and whenever case in different cases, different states. So, if it is ideal, then if you are getting a start, then next state is equal to S add, S add is actually if you look at uh, this is uh, mul 0 1, okay, mul 0 1 and load register is equal to 1. And if you are in S add states, then if next state, next state is equal to shift decrement p, this is actually and if q0 add register is equal to 1, this is a uh, add state and this one is uh, s shift, this is third one. So, in this case, we are decrementing in state uh, uh, mul 0, so both are fine whether you decrement in mul 0 and mul 1. So, in earlier case it was uh, decremented in ASM chart it was decremented in mol 1. So, here we are testing this thing and in this case as shift we are default we are shifting. Okay. So, shift is equal to 1 by default and if 0 happens then go to the ideal state otherwise go to the add state. So, that means it iterates, it iterates. If you are not getting a 0 then it iterates, if it is getting a 0 then it goes to ideal state and make it signal ready. So, this is the controller and what is the data path? So, data path means what signal got activated and based on do the work. If load register is activated, then P is equal to DP width initialize A and C and initialize B and Q, B with multiplicand, Q with multiplier. Actually, whatever we uh, uh, stated in ASM chart, the same thing we are doing. Okay, so, same thing we are doing in the data path unit. Okay, so, if you are getting a load register signals, then do this work. If you are getting a add register signals, then do C and A is equal to A plus B. That means, add A and B and generate this is a A and C. So, this is the carry one and this one is a, a parcel sum. And every time, if you are getting a shift register, you shift it shift right bit 1 and if you are getting a decrement signal, do the decrement operations. So, this is actually data path unit. If you are getting a signals, then do the operations. If you are getting a signals, do the operations and previous one is how to generate control signals, how to generate control signals. So, this is a uh, implementation, this is behavioral implementation, this one is behavioral implementation of actually a controller, behavioral implementation of controller. And this one is actually data path based on what control signal you are getting. So, act upon that. This is actually uh, uh, based on the what kind of signals we are getting from the controller, act upon that. So, particularly is data path work. And this is test bench. For this test bench, we are setting data path with the 3, uh, 5, and uh, we have a product output and we have multiplicand and multiplier where the, in this case we are initializing this is this instantiation of a multiplier. So, with this product ready 
multiply and multiply as input and start and initially we will generate a, a waveform up to 200 time unit after 200 time unit will finish and initially start is equal to 0, reset is equal to 0 and after sometimes reset is equal to 1, we are putting start is equal to 1 and reset is equal to 1 that means initially it will reset the thing and then it will make the start is equal to 1, it will make start is equal to 1. Once start is equal to 1 that means you are in initially it will be in ideal state and once start is equal to 1, okay. So, it will go to the mul 0 state, but before mul going to mul, mul 0 state it executes the initializations particularly clearing A, clearing C, loading multiplicand and multiplier. So, this thing it will do and what we are declaring is this thing. So, 5 is equal uh, means multiplicand is uh, 23. So, binary bit 10, 111 and multiplier is 19 that is uh, 10, 10011 and result will be 437 in decimal. Okay. So, this is one to verify whether we are getting or not and this is the initial block and after that this is uh, how repeat for 26 time. So, and clock cycle is actually clock duration is uh, every 5 unit time, every 5 unit time clock value changes that means it will generate a clock period of 10 unit cycle, 10 unit time and this one is uh, every positive uh, clock, every means positive edge of clock we are trying to display A, Q and C, okay. A, Q, C, A, Q. C A Q actually it hold the A and Q hold the product, A and Q hold the product ok. So, this is the product and this is the, the counter values, what are the counter values we are getting ok. This is this no no this P is actually uh, <coughs> counter value and let us see if you simulate then how we are getting. So, this can be compiled as earlier uh, discussed in earlier classes, this uh, code can be compiled using ivrylog and you can run using uh, a.out and uh, Ubuntu or Linux platform and what we are getting. So, initially, so this is the clock change, C means uh, this is the initial values and this is Q, Q is actually what? This is actually Q is multiplier and initially this is 5 p is equal to 5 okay so for different timing so how this value is this is a uh, uh, 5 then 4 then 3 2 2 1 and 0 so this after 5 times it is uh, because uh, we are setting 5 bits okay p is equal to 5 and bit width is 5 bit width is 5 then it will take how many iteration? B to is 5, that means it will look at 5 into 2, 10 times, 10 cycle it require. It require 10 cycle because B to is 5, B to is 5 and uh, we have 2 states, okay. So, it iterates mol 0 and mol 1, it iterates for 5 into 2 times, 10 states. You require 11 cycle, you will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Clearly means 11 cycle, 11 rising age we are getting. So, this is initializations, this one is initializations and this one is after initializations, this is ideal state, ideal state and S is equal to 1, that is go is equal to 1 and from this, this is uh, M0, M1, M0, M1, M0, M1, M0, M1, M0, M1. So, this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is for bit P is equal to 5, P is equal to 4, P is equal to 3, P is equal to 2, 1 and here we are getting 0. So, in this case uh, P minus 1 if we do then it will be 0. Then what you are getting after this 11 cycle we are getting the result and what is the value of result? So, if you look at the things A and Q, A and Q is the result and if you look at A and Q, result is A and Q. So, this part 
and this part is exactly if you do multiplications 19 into 23, 23 into 19 then you will get 437 and which is actually same as this one, this is MHC this one. So, this is uh, 10111 and this one. So, this is uh, 1, this part is actually A and this part is Q. We can verify these things and we can go for uh, very high level benchmark also. Uh, test bench also, but here we are showing cycle by cycle how it is happening, cycle by cycle how it is happening. And let us uh, go and see a very uh, high level what I can say uh, design. So, we are not saying design, but uh, high level examples. So, vector dot product unit VDPU. So, in general vector dot product unit, vector dot product used in matrix multiplication, neural networks, CNN, DNN many machine learning algorithms. So, vector dot product particularly we do this kind of operations. So, S is equal to summation of W i x i. So, there are two vectors W i weight vector and input vectors that need to get multiplied and get accumulated to a sum. So, S is equal to W i x i. So, each cycle one multiplication and addition we do. Suppose uh, these things suppose for n multiplications, multiplication and additions every cycle we do one multiplication and one additions. So, in earlier case this multiplication take itself is means uh, 2 n minus uh, uh, 2 n plus 1 cycle, but in this case we are assuming uh, every cycle you can suppose you can do one multiplication and one additions. Then we can do this uh, vector dot product unit in n cycle. So, every cycle so you every cycle you try to get one input and do multiplication and additions and accumulate it. So, this is BDPU, this in this case we are ex taking example of uh, 7 uh, numbers. So, not 7 number, this is a uh, number is uh, 8 bit numbers and result will be suppose uh, a 15 bit. Okay. So, this is a uh, result and uh, we are putting a counter, counter for multiplications and what we are doing is actually very simplistic things. If reset is equal to 1, we are initializing result is equal to 0 time result is equal to 0 and count is equal to 0 and we are doing for what 7 times. If if reset is equal to suppose 0, if reset is equal to 1 then this is doing initializations. If reset is equal to 0 then what if count is equal to less than 7 then it is try to multiply 2 input numbers. So, whatever available in the input port. So, if you look at the thing. So, this is the input port, two numbers are in are in input port. Input port have two numbers. So, take the two numbers from input port and generate the temporary multiplications result and then sum it result is equal to result plus time result. And every time every cycle you are doing and we are incrementing the counter, initially counter is equal to 0 and every time we are incrementing counter. So, for multiplying or for doing so summation of uh, i is equal to 0 to suppose uh, 8 0 to 0 to 7 w i x i then it will take uh, uh, 8 cycles initialization suppose initialization take 1 cycle then after uh, 8 cycle you will get the result in 9 cycle you will get the result of vector dot products and this is actually uh, one of the most used what I can say unit of actually uh, in digital uh, uh, design domain and machine learning domain and many domains uh, they use the vector dot product in it. So, people do not design at uh, low level, people go and design at very, very high level okay. and in FPGA and in ASIC design we have actually one particular unit called DSP unit. So, DSP 48 unit it, ca it can do a MAC operation. So, if you do multiplication and audition operations together. MAC operations which can do a multiplication operations and a addition operations can be done in one cycle. This is like summation is equal to i is equal to 0 to n w i x i. So, here s is equal to every time we are doing s is equal to s plus w i x i. So, in this case this multiplications and additions can be done in one unit in consecutive one cycle, one or two cycles. So, 
uh, this actually improved performance of many uh, what you can say uh, machine learning algorithm matrix multiplications and many systems. And in the next class we will try to cover some part of uh, uh, FPG basic introduction to FPG. Thank you. Thank you.